All right, guys, I am back again with another video. In today's video, I want to take an opportunity to show you how to trade using cumulative volume delta. So why would you trade using cumulative volume delta? Well, first of all, this delta is going to show you the strength of the market. So basically, it's going to show you supply and demand coming into the market and demand into the market also. So therefore, you'll be able to know the direction of the trade that you should be trading. And you'll also be able to see the strength of the market and understand how to get into your trade at that point too. So it's going to help you in a variety of ways. And I'm about to show you some of those ways right now. So stay tuned as we get busy. I'm about to get started right now. All right, guys, before we get started, please make sure that you do read my disclosure statement shown here, which is going to let you know that I am not an investment advisor. All I'm doing today is showing you some training material that can help you to understand and learn the market. So therefore, if you decide to take up on any trades or any setups that I may talk about today, please do consult with your own financial advisor and let them help you to understand the relevant risk associated factors with trading the markets, period. All right, so let's get going here. So today we're talking about trading with cumulative delta. All right, so cumulative means increasing or increased in quantity. Delta is the difference between buys at the ask and sells at the bid. All right, so the bid price is the highest price that traders are willing to pay for an asset. So if a trader is buying at the bid, they are willing to buy the asset at the highest price. So therefore, if you are buying at the highest price, that's not the best price, right? And then the ask price is the lowest price that a trader is willing to pay for an asset. So if a trader is selling at the ask, they are willing to sell at the lowest price. So therefore, these traders are very aggressive. Buying at the ask and selling at the bid is known as market orders. So market orders fill immediately at the current market price. So traders who buy at the ask and sell at the bid are seen as aggressive traders, and they're also known as aggressors. This shows who's in, who is dominating the market at that given time. So all these traders that are just putting orders in at the market, there's a reason they want to jump in at that point. There's a reason they want to be in the market quickly and right now. All right. So cumulative volume delta is the difference between these buy and sell aggressors at any given time. So you have that difference and let you know who's in to control the market. The aggressive sellers are the aggressive buyers, which will be very important to us. So how are we going to measure the cumulative volume delta? Well, we're going to use an indicator called cumulative volume <laughs> delta CVD. And basically what you see on the bottom of the chart is the CVD indicator shown as a histogram. So when we look at this, we can see increased um, buyers coming into the market. So this is increasing demand coming into the market right now. As you see that where the angle is here, you can see increased demand coming into the market and therefore the market starts to move to the upside. On the flip side, we see increasing sellers and we see increasing increase in supply coming into the market and therefore you see the market start to drop just like you see right here. So that's very important. That can help you with your trading. But you're not going to take a trade just because you see those things happening. There also has to be some other things that are going to help you or want or make you get into the trade. So it's not going to be just seeing those aspects of the market. All right. So cum cumulative delta absorption. So absorption is the process or action by which one thing absorbs or absorbed or being absorbed by another. All right. So basically like a sponge absorbs water when cumulative volume delta makes a new high or low, but the price does not. This signals absorption in the market. So absorption means that a lot of market orders that are reflected in the cumulative volume delta there, they were absorbed by the passive orders, which were the limit orders. So you have these aggressors buying the market or selling the market either or. And then at certain levels, you have limit orders that 
suck up all these buyers or sellers at a given level. So therefore you see the market dropping, but then all of a sudden you see the market start to reverse, but the cumulative volume, volume delta shows that the market was dropping. Well, the market was dropping, but the, the market got sucked up with these orders from bigger traders with big blocks of trades moving the market to the upside, absorbing all the other trades, all these aggressor trades, all these market trades. So absorption is often caused by the institutional traders stacking those orders or those iceberg orders that you don't see iceberg orders, but really iceberg orders are just big blocks of orders that are put out into the market quickly at various levels in the market, okay? So let's look at some examples of absorption, looking how we would notice absorption with the CVD. So with the CB, with the CVD, we could have, could notice the absorption because we could see sup demand coming into the market right here, demand coming into the market, but then all of the sudden supply takes over. That's because at this given level, limit orders absorbed those um, market orders, those aggressors. All right, so in this case, the limit orders absorb those buy aggressors and the market dropped to the downside. In this case here, you also see a absorption based off of the CVD going to the downside, which is so showing us supply coming into the market. But it gets to this level here, and at this level, the market flattens out. So basically you could see where the market flattened out with one candle, two candles, three candles. And at that point, demand came into the market. So this level is where these aggressors were absorbed and the market started to move to the upside. And this is very big when you start trading with the cumulative volume delta. I'll show you that you need to first see these flat levels. You need to see these levels where the market flattens out and then you can see who's in control of the market at that level. And that's how you're going to look to take your trades. So here's another example of absorption. You could see from this point to this point, the market was moving to the upside. So we had demand coming into the market. But in the, in the opposite, we had supply overtaking the market. Okay. So that's a bigger example of absorption. Here's another bigger example of absorption. So basically you see supply, the market moving to the downside, but demand coming into the market and eventually the market moves to the upside. And here's another example. So again, the main thing here is these levels. There's levels in the market that are very important to us. So one of the mark levels would be, as you could see this level right here, um, let me mark some of these levels with my tool to show you what I'm talking about exactly. So when I look at the market, where are we? When I look at the market, I'm looking at flat levels. So here's a flat level here. We notice this flat level here because it's a double bottom, but there's also a flat level right here, just this flat level in the process being at this flat level we start to see demand coming into the market all right first we saw supply coming into the market this is these aggressive aggressors these aggressive sellers selling the market but then they get overtaken in this area all right they get absorbed at this area and the market moves to the upside they get absorbed by the limit orders that are limited here to buy the market so these limit orders are not aggressive orders. They're not aggressive traders. They're traders sitting and waiting. We don't see those orders. We see the immediate moves from the aggressors. Or the aggressors are showing the market moving. And then these moves where you see the limit orders sitting, well, we don't see them, but exactly these limit orders are sitting at a level. Then they cause the market to drop because they overtake these, these aggressors and then boom, the market drops, flattens out. And then again, a nice level where there's some strong buying from limit orders. Also, some aggressors moving in here also. So we have a mixture of both. 
and they're overtaking these sell aggressors and then the market moves to the upside. You're going to be able to use this strongly in your trading as you continue to watch what we do here. All right, so here's another level. This is what I basically look for when I'm looking to get a trade. So I'm going to take you to some charts after this and just roll through some setups here. But um, one thing that I'm always looking for is this. First, I want to see this flat level. And so the market and the CVD should be doing the same thing. So at this flat level, the market flattened out. Well, what I'm looking for is these aggressors taking over the market right here. You can see this candle was bigger. This bar was big, but then the next one was higher. And then the next higher and higher. This showed that we had buy aggressors coming into the market. And they pushed this market up off of this level. We see aggressive buyers at this level. And the market showed its hand also because the market flattened out right here with one candle, two candles, three candles, four candles, five candles. So the market flattened out there, showed its hand, and then we could see that buyers were coming into the market. This is a good opportunity for us to place a trade in this area. All right. And the best thing is to get the trade as tight to this level as possible. And that for you can have your stop loss down here. The closer you can trade to this level, the better. All right. It eliminates a lot of your risk. And how does that eliminate risk? Well, if you're going to let's just say this is where our stop loss is going to be. We know that if we take take it here, let's say that's 50 pips. But if we take it up here, let's say that's 70. You've added risk now instead of de deleted risk. We want to eliminate risk. We don't want to add risk. So getting it as close to this level as possible. But then also there's other signs of, the, of that are going to help you to understand what may be happening on, at this point in the market. So first of all, you have one thing where the market is boxed in. It's boxed in this one candle. And we're trading inside that one candle for four days here. So trading inside that candle for four days. And again, this could be this works on any time frame. So mostly when I'll be trading the futures market and I'll see this. I'll trade on a two minute time frame or a 2000 tick chart. And I'm looking for this exact same setups here. And so I also do this on a daily time frame on any market. So what I'm trying to say here is that this market is boxed in. You have this basically as your mother bar. All right. And this bar, this candle is pregnant with four babies inside. All right. She's having four babies. Well, this baby tried to kick out and he couldn't kick out. So he had to stay inside. Well, at this level, this is rejection right here. All right. Rejection of this level. So if this level is being rejected and we see buyers coming into the market and we have a rejection level, a rejection, isn't that a good opportunity to make a trade? And along with that, when we, what we also see on here is one, two, three inverted hammers. All right. And then a, a regular hammer. These are all our signs of reversals to reverse this market back to the upside. So it lets us know this correction could be over. The market made its own level. Now there's also another level in here that we would pay attention to. All right. And that would be this fractal level. This fractal level extends over to this level here and the market pulled up to the level, came back to structure at structure is where we saw increased buyers coming into the market. Therefore, we kind of expected the structure level to hold with the rejection inside bars and then the market moved to the upside. And that's how you will catch your trade. But again, you want to be as close to this level as possible. OK. So that's the things you're looking for when you're trading with cumulative volume delta. Let's move on. So let's look at if we did take a trade at this level, how, how we could how this could play out for us and what we would be looking at. All right. 
So then this was the level we entered the market in this area anyway, in this area. And basically you could see the market pushed back up to this structure level double top here. There's a lot of signs happening in this market right now. So we see strong buyers coming into the market, but I'm going to show you something else. We also see a double top level. This is where we want to compare because this makes a level for us. We want to compare the, the Delta. So previously at this level, this Delta bar was up here. We had a lot of buying at this level. All right. A lot of buy aggressors were at this level. And then the market dropped off. You could see they started to slack. But again, we get to this same level. Do we still have that same type of buy aggressors? No, we have decreasing. So therefore, if we're decreasing, we have supply coming into the market at this level right here. All right. And that's what we would expect the market to drop for us at that point. But let me continue backwards from where we were. When we took this trade here, we would look for the market to move to structure. And that would be this top here. And it moved right to the level. All right, exactly to the wick, basically. So that's a strong trade setup right there. Because again, I mentioned all the thing, all the aspects of the trade previously. All right, and so you could say like, this is easy to see because the market either is going to, I either see these things or I don't. If I don't see them, I don't trade, but I'm looking for the flat level. So I'm looking for more than two candles because it's always going to be two candle turnaround. But if you got three candles sitting at a level or four candles sitting at a level or five candles or six or more, then you have a level that the market developed at that point. Right. And then also if you then have a, maybe a double bottom, that's going to be another level for us. So those are the things we could look at because like here you have a double top. All right. And at this top, like again, we saw this supply coming into the market. So we kind of suspect the market to have a drop here. And the market had a drop here. <laughs> market dropped off. Now this trade would have been hard to catch, um, but you did see what I'm so showing you. Now it would have been hard to catch it at the level pretty much, but you see the big rejection here. So with the rejection, you see the increase of um, supply coming into the market, increasing sellers. And you see you basically after this candle, you basically would start out thinking a short there, but as the market moved higher, you would have had an opportunity to short here based off of what this candle gave you. But you definitely would have been able to look at this level. Okay. Now I would have been a little nervous trading at this level because this level previously was a support level. So I'd like to see that level get violated. So what I would look for is basically for the market to drop and pull back to that level. And then I trade to the downside because at this point I'm kind of waiting to see if it's going to be resistance, if this is going to be a nice supply level and then the market drops or else is, is the market going to break through my cumulative volume can tell me a lot of what's happening at that level also. Okay, so that's going to be something you're going to look for. Next thing. We have another opportunity to trade the market. Um, so here it's a little bit different. We don't see the cumulative volume giving us any kind of uh, signal per se. But what we do have is a nice level that the market made because we hit there, hit here, we hit here and here. All right. So price hits that resistance level multiple times with aggressive buyers at the ask. All right. The level has an abundance of limit orders absorbing the buyers and price falls hard. And how do we know that? Because see these aggressors. See all these buy aggressors. They're unable to push the market through the level, unable to push it through the level, unable to push through the level unable to push through the level, the level may, remains intact. And then we violate structure. The market drops to the downside. All right. Structure is violated. At this point, I would have first looked at this structure level to see if the market was going to hold. And that's this level right here. And it created a level. The market sat here for a little bit, made a push back up to the level. But again, even with that push back to the level, 
these buy aggressors were not able to push the market down. They're being absorbed. All right. They are being absorbed by these limit orders that are already sitting at this low level that already traders already knew traders like you and I who already knew this level was a double top or triple top or quadruple top or whatever. We already knew this was a strong resistance point. So we had orders set at this level already. These aggressors are breakout traders looking to get into this market, believing the market's going to break through that level. So you see the aggressors coming in, but you don't see any return. So what I mean by that is you see the aggressors pushing, but you don't see anything happening. All right. They're pushing and buying and the market's not moving past the level. So therefore you get a good indication that we may break to the downside. You could look to short at in this area and then you could see what happens. Boom. The market drops to the downside hard. All right. So basically at these support and resistance levels is where we often will find our passive orders. The passive traders placing large orders at um, these support and resistance levels. So since these levels are seen by all traders, just like I said, like you and I, they're the areas where there may be absorption taking place. And that's what we just saw happening based off of everything that I just shown you. All right. And usually the market orders are the aggressive breakout traders who are now trapped in this bad trade. And now they got to get out. They help the market to drop even more. All right. So the aggressors, when the market doesn't break their way, they are help helping us because now we are now looking to trade off of our level and they give us even more steam because they're stuck here and they have to get out. And as they get out, gives us more momentum for our trade. Right. Let's go to the next. So here's a good level, um, very good level. And again, this is what I talk about the market making uh, a level. So I'm going to just give you examples of the market making its own level. So really you could see a, a level here and this is like a longer term level, right? And it only was two candles at this point. Now I would consider this three candles, but it was really two if you want to count. And this is two candles. So two candle turnaround. Our two candle level is not good for me. So I want to see three candle or more. And when I say that, I'm talking about levels like this, where the market stays at this level one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. And then the sixth time is the charm. But what did we notice as the market sat at that level? Six, five, five strong candles. Well, five candles as the market sat at that level right here is right there, right here is right there, right here is right there. Here is here. Here is here. Well, what's happening with these one, two, three, four, five candles. These five candles, once again, same thing we've seen before. They're sitting inside the mother bar. So this candle is pregnant again, another pregnant candle that has four babies inside again. Seems like these candles like having four babies. But anyway, what we saw here was demand coming into the market because we saw this was the lowest candle, the lowest bars. I call these bars. They're not candles. And then the next bar was higher, showing that there was an increase in demand, an increase in buyers. And then again, another increase in buyers. Well, if we're seeing these increasing in, in buyers, eventually we're going to see the market do something. So we should already have our level where we want to get into the market set. And then ba boom, the market gives us that entry. All right. And then again, the market moves higher moves up to this structure level right here. All right. So if you draw a line, this structure level comes all the way over. And then you could see that at this level, the market makes four touches, four touches makes its own level. Even if we didn't know this level, we don't, we don't know this level. So we don't understand that level, right? But we see the market make its own level with one, two, three, four candles. It's always going to be a two candle turnaround, but this is a four candle. 
So now with the four candles, we start to see if there's any supply coming into this market. And sure enough, look at that supply coming into the market. So if you wait too late, you're way down here. You're getting farther away from this level. That's basically going to help you to re reduce risk. So the farther away from that level you take the trade, the worse. So at this point where this trade took place, what did you have here? All right. What did you have there? You had an evening star. An evening star. And the level to enter was right there. And the market broke that level. You should be in the trade and you were able to catch this profit in the market. All right. So that's what you look at. That's what we saw. Let's move to the next. Again, the market makes a great level, as you can see. So again, the market gives us one candle, two candles, three candles, four candles, five candles inside this one mother candle. But first of all, let's think about the five candle situation. It made a, its own flat level with five candles. In the process, this was the first candle right here. One, two, this is the sec third, fourth bar, and then fifth. If we take notice, what's happening? The market is showing an increase in demand. We should be able to take the trade here and catch some profit. All right. So you see that flat level. But then the market decides to get, come back to that level. So the market basically does like a double bottom. Comes back to that level. So now we draw this zone and we see this bigger level. Well, in the process of seeing this level, we see buyers pushing into the market. These aggressors. All right. So demand is coming into the market. Very good. Boom. We're able to get into a trade and we're able to make good profit. Now, I know you're not going to catch all that, but that's where the market went to off of just seeing where the buyers and sellers are are strong. And if they're, the buyers are strong at your level, then that's what you want to be doing. You want to be buying, not selling, not trying to get the breakout. OK. Here's another level. This is a nice resistance zone. You could see right here, first of all, this resistance zone made a big wick. So when it makes a wick like this, I make it into a zone. So then I call every candle that comes back to this level, I call this a flat level. So each candle touched this level pretty much here. So we have a flat level. Well, in the process, if this level is flat because you can base it off of this, these all these candles touched all the way up to this point. From that point to this point, we have increased supply coming into the market, major sellers coming into the market. The market hasn't moved. Well, it's going to be careful. So you should be able to get into the trade and boom, the market drops. Now, not always is it going to work for you and not always are you going to see that. And it could last days without seeing like this level right here. This, I call this a flat level. It's basically a double bottom. But at this point, we couldn't tell. We weren't able to tell who was in control of the market. So therefore, I wouldn't have been able to trade that or, or trade it like I'm telling you. All right, because it did create the flat level that we want to see, but it did not show its hand. So I couldn't tell if it, there were strong buyers or sellers in this market. There were no aggressors at this point, really. So we really couldn't understand what was happening here. And then by the time we were able to see, the market was already pushing higher. Too late for us to trade. All right. Here's another level. So this is a beautiful example here, because first of all, a lot of traders, if you trade with me or if, you, if you're a student of mine, you know that I use fractal levels a lot. All right. So in this example, we can see price move back to structure, which is a fractal level. And it made this structure level right here. This red line is a hidden line off of the fractal level. So the market breaks the fractal level right there and moves higher. Then it pushes back down to this fractal level. OK, now this is the good thing because we're going to be trading right with this trend. All right, because the second thing that happens now. 
is at this level. We only had a two candle level, a two candle um, reversal here, but that's okay because we had a, a defined level, a structure level. Well, when we had that level, what did we see happening when we came back to it, when we got back to it? We saw increased demand coming into the market. We're able to catch the trade. And then the market pushed higher. And then what does the market give us? What does the market give us right here? I know if you trade with me, you know what the market's giving us. It's an end wave. Gives us that end wave, something that we look for all the time. Basically, it's giving us a one to one ratio, which means A, B, that's supposed to be a B, is equal to, I call this the equal sign, C, D. So when you look up your trade, when you set up, when you enter at C, are one, two, three is where I enter my trades. I always enter my trades at three RC. So if I'm entering a trade here, then I'm looking for the market to push to four or D, right? How do I find that level? Well, I use my um, trend tool and I know also using Ichimoku, I can use my Ichimoku levels to figure out where this level is because that's an end wave, a one to one end wave and then I'm able to know where to take profit. All right, so all those factors together with trading this cumulative volume delta will help you. So here's another level. Again, the market pushes up the structure, right? Here we see this other fractal level, another fractal level, just like the previous one. The CVD so strong buying pressure already all right, so the CVD is already showing strong buying pressure because look at that. So we, we see strong supply coming into the market from this point. But the market pushes higher. Absorption takes place at this level. All right, and then the market drops. We could see these sellers coming into the market. And then the market drops. First of all, what would help us would be, first of all, we know we have a level. When the market's down here, we look for the market to push back to this level, this structure point. When it gets to this structure point, do we still have strong sellers? Yes, you could see the increase in sellers and the market drops. That's what you would be looking for to make that trade. All right, there's aggressive sellers at the level placing sales at the bid, at market, along with limit orders absorbing the market buyers. All right, so those market buyers are being absorbed by these non-aggressive by these passive traders who are trading at the level all right they're not just jumping in they're trading at that level here we see again another flat level basically the market makes this like a double bottom as it comes back to the level what do you see overall you see an overall increase in demand and then the market pushes higher but on a smaller term, that's bigger term. That's looking at the whole picture, right? But we want to look at smaller term also. Again, we see this smaller term where we have a mother bar and we see one candle with uh, inside, 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 and an inside. Four candles inside this one candle. Well, these four candles are showing increased buying pressure coming into the market. So demand is coming into the market and then the market pushes higher, breaks out of that level, cracks a little bit and pushes a little bit higher. If you would have seen this coming in, you would have been able to take a trade and catch that trade. Now, what happens is a lot of people don't see this coming in. So they get into the trade late. Maybe they get in the trade in this area and then the market cracks. They can't withstand. They get out of the trade and then the market pushes back their way. Well, you want to get in near this level. All right, because you want to be able to see this buying pressure coming in, basically the demand, and you want to be able to keep your risk as tight as possible because what we're trading here is momentum. So either we have the momentum or we don't. So we don't need to wait long because if we take the trade as close to the level as possible with signs that the market is going to push higher with the rejection level, all right, because you see the rejection and we put our stop loss there. We don't have to wait up here because now if the market doesn't go our way, we want to be out of the market right away. 
All right. So it's always like if the market doesn't go your way, get out right away. OK, so that's what we want to do. We want to be out of the market at that point if it doesn't go our way. But in this case, it did. If you could bought the market at the right spot, you'd have been safe. But again, buying the market at the wrong spot goes against you quickly. And then see, that's where the momentum was not with you at that point. And then the market goes against you. You're out of the trade. Then the market goes back your way. See it all the time, right? So we have one more slide here. This is the last one. But in this whole area, we had a lot of things happening. So basically, first, there was a structure level. We had this this structure right here created by this fractal. So if you drew a line across, you would see that the market pushed off of the fractal and then broke the fractal. But then it pushes back to the fractal. All right. So when it pushed back to the fractal. You saw buyers coming into the market right here but right here we had this little bit of absorption the market dropped now you you would have to be able to understand how to get into the trade here and then the market drops to the downside all right but again you want to put catch it as close as this level as possible sometime it's hard to catch it at that level because one thing you're not going to do is just place a trade at that level just because you need a couple reasons to place that trade at that level one is price action the second is you need to see these buyers coming in and also you got to have the level. So you got three things in your favor is the price action, the level and the, the momentum of the market based off the aggressors, either buyers or sellers, whichever way you're trading. But then again, the market moves up, push, makes its own level right here, then makes a double top. Right. So at this double top. What was happening when we hit this point right here and this point right here? Well, let's see right here and basically right there. The market was showing increase in supply, increased sellers coming into the market. You should have known that the market wasn't going to not going to break this level. Why? Because you've got monster sellers pushing this level back to the downside. And that's what happened. Sell aggressors push this thing back to the downside and boom, it dropped to the downside. So therefore, those are things that are going to help you to be able to trade cumulative volume delta. So what I'm going to do is take you to a couple charts and basically I'm just going to go through some trades that we could how you want to look at the trades. All right. So I'm going to go back test a couple of these uh, opportunities for you. So we'll look at some of those opportunities. So let's go look at them right now. All right. So we're looking here at the micro e mini S&P 500 and what we're looking to see if we could back test this a little bit to see how our our trade setup will work all right so we can see the market pushing lower all right but there's no signs of anything for us right now so no signs of anything but now we start to see a little bit and still again not real strong for me but now it is a little bit so what i'm looking at is this um at this level let me draw it here at this level, we see a flat market. Basically, we're we're hitting here with one candle, two candle, three candle, four candle. So four candles are sitting at this level. Based off of where this first started, this was still the market dropping to the downside. But then this bigger candle, that actually the fourth candle is right here. And then you can see increase in buyers coming into the market. All right. So with an increase in buyers, we're speak, expecting maybe this market to hold here and the market to push forward. All right. So in the process, what happens? Let's see. Even better, the market flattens out even more at the level and you could see even more buyers coming into the market. So a strong demand level. And at that demand level. Look what happens now. The thing here, though, this would have been risk uh, iffy because like I keep my stop loss slightly below this level. So when I put a stop loss, I'm going to be slightly below the low point. 
So this market came back hard to push against that level. So I always want to be a little bit below that level because I know the market seems to come back right to this level a lot of times. So this would have been close either getting stopped out or not. But you could see these buyers are coming into the market and it's pushing the market off this level. Right. So the market's getting pushed off of that level. And there we go. Good trade off of that level. All right. So that's one trade. You could see the buyers came into the market at that level and kind of like the longer you can wait to see that level play out because this is the flat level. The market came back to this level. Sometime if you get in too early, you could get stopped out, but you want to remain. That's why I say you get stopped out, get out quick. So don't wait. Let that thing take you out quickly. And then you have another chance to get into the market to make make that good profit. All right. So you want to keep your losses small because basically, again, this is a momentum trading strategy, really, because we're trying to catch the, the momentum of these aggressors buying the market or selling the market at that point. So let's look at a couple other opportunities here. Let's look at something else. All right. So we're looking at the Aussie CAD two minute time frame we're on here. Um, I'm going to show you uh, this two minute time frame and then I'll take you to a higher time frame to show you that you can do the same thing on the daily time frame. It doesn't matter the time frame because no matter the time frame, we're always going to see buyers or sellers coming into the market. So we're able to see that it doesn't really matter the time frame. Now we could see the market pause in here because there's two candles, but that's not enough for a pause. All right. So we'll see if that's going to be a pause or not. So now we got a three candle pause off of this level. So let's mark the level and then let's be patient and wait and see. So we would mark this level to see if this is a flat level and maybe right away we don't mark it yet. But one reason why we would mark it is because two things are happening here. So as we watch this market, it is starting to flatten out. But the bigger thing is we can see an increase in uh, demand coming into the market. This strong increase in demand is telling me that this level is where a lot of buyers are coming into the market. These aggressors are just coming into the market strong here. And there's also probably some limit orders coming in at this level too, helping to increase this demand, showing this strong uh, level of demand here. All right. So therefore we should be looking to get into a trade. Um, at this point, you do have some price action entries you could get into. First of all, you could look at getting into the trade at this level. So maybe you want to see the market break that level, close above that level or violate that level or just get in at that level with your stop loss slightly below the level. So something like that is something how you would look for. And you wouldn't have gotten triggered yet. All right. And then you could see these three candles. What's happening at we, as we see this market flattening out that, at this level? More buyers are still coming into the level. Increased demand. So I'm thinking, well, yeah, this level might be going to the upside. And then another candle. Then another. We still have increased demand. Look, the demand is increasing steadily while the market sits at this level. That lets me know something may happen here. Now we would get triggered into the trade. There's still increasing demand coming into this market. And then the market starts to move away from the level. And then you could see there it is. A good opportunity, a good trade. All right. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the market to flatten out like that. And you can be patient and wait for this to see how many candles you get there. And then you want to say, well, I'm going to break this level and I'm getting into the trade. So I really don't want to close above that level, but I just want to get in when the market hits that level. You could even get tighter because you have this indecision candle here. And this is almost like right here. You have this little indecision candle. You could put a level at that point. But you also look like you have kind of like a small morning star with that candle developing like that, where you could then get into the trade at that point. All right. So that's how you're going to look for these trades. Let's let's look at one more, which will be on the daily time frame. OK. So let's look at something on the daily time frame. We'll look at. Matter of fact, let's do a, a um, maybe like Bitcoin on the daily time frame. All right. So on Bitcoin, we're on the daily time frame here and we could see 
strong push to the downside and we'll see what happens here so now we have a, a level with a tweezer bottom right here but that's nothing to get into a trade that's the start of maybe something reversing because you got to have a tweezer bottom or top to reverse anyway you won't be able to re reverse without it but then the market kind of makes the same level so now i'm going to draw this and then i'm going to start paying attention to this level all right and then now the market gives me a rejection well when i look at this rejection at this rejection along with what we're seeing happen here so what's happening here at this level you have a rejection of the level and you have increasing buyers coming into the market you have an increase in demand coming into that market time to get into a trade all right set your entry and be ready to get into that trade because you see buyers coming into the market um, let me clear that And then you could see the market would have triggered you into the trade. And then you could see the market push off the level. Now the market pushes back to the level. So as the market pushes back to this level, you've got now what we will consider a double bottom. But again, all I really call it is a flat level because the market is flat at this level. It's not violating this level. So I call this a flat level if we come back to it a couple times. So again, we got a flat level here. So we need to wait and see. And in this case, you're not catching that trade, all right? But there was increased buyers coming into the market. You wouldn't have caught the trade if you were in the trade and you were still in that trade. You would have been able to catch that profit there. But again, you could see what I'm looking at. So let's let's let the market continue. Here's where you got a double, basically a tweezer top. Not enough candles for me. So I would mark that level and watch to see what happens if the market comes back to that level. In this case, the market didn't come back to the level. You could see increased sellers. So increased supply coming into the market and the market just drops. I'm not catching this trade here unless I already have a level that I know I could get into the market at. So in this case, it would be this level here. Now this would be a double top and I probably wouldn't have thought to enter this trade to be honest with you because I saw, like if I look at the overall market, what I saw at this point was strong demand so i would have been looking for it to break through but then on a smaller note we see strong supply and then the market drops to the downside so those are the things you're going to be looking at for getting into a trade i'm going to look at one last opportunity and i'm going to show you um let's do a, let's still continue with maybe um a cryptocurrency so let's look at something else. All right, so here we go with XRP. This will be the last one that I look at. So really what I would have been looking for already at XRP is this, because first of all, I see an increase in buyers coming into the market overall at this level, all right? But I do see some sellers coming in, but overall I see buyers coming into the market. So I'm gonna pay attention to the level and I wanna see if I can get an entry on this level. All right, so that's what I would be paying attention to. And then I see the market slowly break this level a little bit. So I'm not trying to get into a trade yet because the market broke the level a little bit. But really to break that level, to me, you got to get through this level first, right? And then I would consider it broken pretty much because this would be like a zone. So I want to see what's going to happen at this level. And boom, the market breaks right through. I myself don't catch this trade to the downside definitely don't catch the trade to the downside and we never saw buyers coming into the market right we saw all sellers coming into the market so we saw all supply from this point where we we couldn't get into the trade all right we did see some buyers coming in here and maybe if you were quickly you had been able to catch this trade but overall then the market pushed back to this level you would have been looking for a long opportunity but then you see sellers continue to stay in the market and violate the level so therefore that level was is violated right so therefore we're not gonna catch that trade because the way i would now catch the trade would be different i'd look for the market to pull back to that level again and then i would catch that trade on the ups on the bottom side 
So now the market continues to move to the downside. And so now the market makes a rejection here. So I'm going to mark that rejection because to me, rejections mean a lot. And unless the market violates the rejection level, then we're good, right? So it's even better because the market now is formed three candles at the same level. And we can make this into a zone since this is, um, we'll make this into a zone because it has a wick on it, that wick right there. So we'll make it into a zone. So from these two candles, let's move this over one so we could see from these three candles. I call this flat. I don't look at the tails. I call this flat. They're right in the same level. All right. So, but at that point, I see increased buyers coming into the market kind of early to get into the trades yet. And now the market stays at this level and we're really trading inside this body right here. Again, another inside body and increased demand coming into the market. Uh, we whipped out here. I don't know. You might have got anxious and caught the trade already. You might have got anxious and jumped in there already. Impatience. Then the market pushes back down again. Now we're looking at an opportunity to get into this market. We bounced off of this level quite a many, many times and we never broke outside of this body. So one, two, three, four, five candles at this level and XRP is sitting at a strong support level that the market created, right? And as it creates that level, what is the main thing that we're looking at? We see these aggressors in the market right here. These aggressors are pushing this, looking to push this market higher. They're steadily buying this market and buying this market. All right. And again, at this level, you also have passive traders, which are limit orders. All right. And then we still have aggressors, which are these market orders, put trying to push this market to the upside or downside, depending on who's overruling. But at this point, it looks like demand is overruling and we have more buyers coming into the market. So at this level, we want to get into the trade. And what happens here? The market remains at the level, but we still see buyers coming into the market. Isn't that strong? We see all these buyers still coming into the market. The market hasn't pushed off the level. Be patient because it probably will or else it's going to break hard to the downside because that's where you'll see at this level. You could see strength in buyers or you may see absorption where these buyers get overtaken by the limit order sitting at this level that are sell limits. All right. Where the market goes to the downside. So you could see that, but we're expecting support and resistance to hold. Right. So if that's the case, if it's going to hold, we're looking for the market to push higher. And we're starting to see some signs of it because we're still seeing, seeing increased buyers. But now we get worried because we push back to the level. Don't be worried. The reason being because we didn't violate the level. We still didn't violate the level. All right. And unless we violate the level, we're not worried. Increased buyers coming in hard on this market. All right. So you probably sat here for days if you were in this trade and you were worried. But if you're patient, now it starts to pay off for you. And you can see what's happening. And then the market pushes even higher. And now you're very happy. <laughs> and that's it. There you go. Market pushes all the way back up the structure and violates it a little bit. But that would have been your trade. You could see these buyers coming into the market and eventually it played its hand. And that's what you look for with this. All right. So if you want to see some more of my trading here, basically using this uh, same strategy, using um, really nothing on the chart except just the cumulative volume delta, I just really need to see that. And I also can see levels, mark levels and, and use those levels. I can show you some more trade setups and some live trades that I did, some live trading on the S&P 500 where you could look at the video right here. All right. Look at that video. And then the next thing you could do is just um, make sure that you 
subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button, and you'll be able to know when I post another video like this or any other videos like this. But guys, hopefully this helped you out. And basically, till next time, have a great one. God bless. So long.